Hi, this is Martin from Imagine New Systems, and today I'm going to show you how to use the Remove tool to, surprise surprise, remove stuff, but also add stuff into a shot. Once again, we're using clips from Artbeats, uh, this time from the company Rubberball. Uh, if you want to find this clip, you can look for RPFH11444 on the Artbeats site. Quite often when you're working on beauty shots like this, you get some very picky people that want to get rid of little features when they're actually looking perfectly fine. Let's have a look right in here. See this? Oh my god, there's a tiny, tiny blemish here. And the client usually wants to get rid of stuff like this. I think, you know, personally, from this distance, you're never going to see it. But they do actually get picky about this kind of stuff. So, how do we get rid of this tiny, tiny important blemish here? Here's what we do. We just draw a shape around the area. So we're getting the plane of this nose. If you know the planes of the face, we've got these planes on the sides, the top of the nose here. We've also got the planes of the face on down the sides of the cheeks and across the bridge of the mouth with these muscles circular out. Here, because we're focusing on this little blemish on the side of the nose here, I'm going to track this area here. I'm going to get a little bit of that corner of the eye just to get some detail. I'm going to turn on my perspective and we're going to start tracking this. I've started from this frame, which is perfectly fine, so I'm going to track backwards first. And away it goes. So once we've tracked that side, we just go back to our original keyframe and start tracking forwards. So we can see it blinking there, but it's not affecting that corner there. And then we've got that mask. So it's just tracking through the rest of that shot, like so. Now, in order to use the Remove tool to actually clean out this blemish, what we need to do is actually bring the frame into Photoshop. But first of all, what I'm going to do is create a small mask around this area. So I'm going to stretch out the back mask here a bit first, and I'm going to call this layer Nose Track. And we're going to need to use this Nose Track as our backing layer. I'm then going to go zoom in even further. This is how far I have to zoom in just to see this blemish. And I'm just going to draw a very small shape to cover that little mark there. And we can smooth that out if we want to, but it doesn't really matter. So once we've got this shape, I'm going to call this one M-ish, like so. And I'm going to link that blemish to the nose track. So if we just zoom out again here, you'll see that now we'll follow along with the track that we've just done, and turn in perspective. So now what I need to do is go over to my Remove tool and set up the parameters for the remove. So I'm going to set my last frame to 49, because there's 49 frames in this, and it can search 49 frames before and 49 frames after. If you've got a fairly long shot and you know that there's not much change, you can actually reduce this to change the amount of the frames it searches through to speed up your result. So we're not going to be able to remove this uh, straight away because we don't have any moving background behind this blemish. So what we need to do is create a clean plate. So in order to do that, I'm just going to come in here to my frame one and click create. What this does is it creates a clean plate in the background. And if we edit that, you can see here is this clean plate. If I just drag this out, you can see it's created a TIFF file in my results folder using the same frame as what we've just created but called it clean plate. So I'm going to click OK on that one and now we need to switch over to Photoshop. So let's just load up Photoshop. So once we've got our file into Photoshop we just zoom into that area and we paint it out with whichever technique we like. So in this case I'm just going to use a simple clone and paint that bit out. So I'm just going to save just make sure that's saved. Just thinking about it. There we go. And then we can move back over to Pro. Now, here's an important thing. I'm going to now remove this without changing any of the other settings with this clean plate in place. So once we've got this clean plate, I'm going to try and remove it first without changing any of my illumination settings. So I'm going to turn off the overlay so we can see this. And let's start rendering forwards. So you can see, very cleverly, it's saying removing blemish in frame 1. And it takes a bit because we're trying to get rid of those frames. And you can see how that's removing. As we move through the clip, however, you'll see something odd start to happen. 
So we can render that frame and you'll see it's actually cleaned up quite nicely. But if I move to the end of my clip, where we haven't rendered here, and I try and do the same, let's just click the render button on this one, you'll see that there's a very obvious mark where I've painted in that clean plate because it hasn't put in any of the lighting information from how her skin tones are changing as the light hits her face. So what we need to do there is actually change it to a linear illumination model. The reason we choose linear is because her face is actually turning in a linear way from left to right. And this means that what it'll do is calculate how that lighting is changing over time. If we have a much more erratic shot and there's lighting going all over the place, we also want to choose interpolate. Now keep in mind that when you use illumination modeling, if you use either linear or interpolated illumination modeling, it will slow down your remove quite significantly because there's a lot of data being calculated to put that lighting back in. So let's try that now and I'm going to render out it through linear instead. So I'm just going to click render and I'm going to pause this because it does take a little while. So here's the result from that. You can see with the linear uh, lighting we've put back in, now the blemish is completely removed without any perceptible change in the skin tones. This is really, really powerful when you've got to work on large shots and you don't want to have to go in frame by frame and put the lighting back in. So because we can do this, we can actually even add stuff to her face. Say, for example, if we wanted to, you know, tattoo down her cheek, but or, you know, put mascara around her eyes. In this case, I'm going to show an example doing around her lips. So, I'm going to grab this frame here, and actually we'll go to the middle. I'm going to find a nice middle frame, about there. And I'll turn back on my overlays. And I'm going to draw a simple shape around her lips, like so. And I'm going to turn off the... Um, nose and blemish ones because we don't need to see those now. And I'm going to call this one Lip Track, like so. So once we've got that, I'm going to turn on my perspective again, and I'm going to start tracking this backwards and forwards again. So I'm going to uh, track uh, backwards, Now you can see the blemish has come back, this is because Mocha defaults to tracking the original source clip that we brought in. So don't be too concerned if that comes back because we're going to be using this again uh, when we do the other replacement. So we're just tracking through that original source clip, like so. So we've got a nice track around that. And now what I'm going to do is actually draw a shape around the lips. So I'm going to come back to that original shape and let's just turn off the lip track for now and I'm going to zoom into here a little bit closer and do some lip shapes. So we're going to come down here with the X-Bind tool and we'll just draw those shapes in like so. Just smooth that out a little bit there and I'm going to add another shape, and it's specifically the Add To button. I'm going to add to the same layer. And draw around the bottom lip as well, just like so. And again, I'm going to smooth that out a little bit. And once again, we're going to link to that track. So let's just call this Lips, and we'll link the lips to the lip track. So now when we play back, those lips are going through. Now because the lips are turning and actually revealing more information as we go, uh, we are going to have to do a little bit of manual work here. So I'm going to come back to the starting frame here and just tweak those frames at the end. Like so, just get rid of those teeth in there. And we're probably going to have to do the same at the other end, so let's just go to the other end. Yeah, you can see just here, just cut those in like so. I just tweak that one a little bit there. 
Okay, so once we've got this shape, uh, we can now go and do the same remove process. But in this case, I'm going to actually colour her lipstick a different colour in Photoshop. Now, because there is a significant change in terms of how her lips are turning and revealing more of the lips in the corners here, I'm actually going to create two keyframes this time, uh, sorry, two clean plates this time for the layer. So what we're going to do is, I've already got the original clean plate for this one, which I'm going to paint on again, but I'm going to come over to the end frame this time, and I'm going to go to the remove tool, and again we're going to set it up the same way, so I'm going to set it up as 49 frames, and I'm going to create a one for the 49th frame instead, so I'm going to click create, and that will create a new clean plate, and now I'm going to go into Photoshop again, so here we are in Photoshop, here's frame one that we did before, so let's just open up the other frame now. So there's frame 49, and we're going to zoom into the same shot. So let's work on frame one first, since we've already been working on this one. Uh, I'm going to create a new layer, just like so, and I'm going to pick the paintbrush. We're going to do this very quickly. So we'll get a very garish colour here, and I'm going to turn on colour in my layer tool, and I'm just going to start coming in here and painting. So I'm just going to paint out those lips in this new delightful shade. Just like so. not being a lipstick aficionado, I don't know if this is a good colour or not. I'm going to assume not. Just like so. And I think we'll reduce that opacity down just to make it a little bit less horrific. There we go. And then I'm going to merge that down. So we're just going to merge that and save that file. So once that's saved, I'm just going to close that and start working on frame 49 instead. Now obviously the blemish has returned in here, but this isn't going to matter too much because we're going to use the same clean plate just for the lips area. So we're going to use the original remove footage that we did to get rid of the blemish and then apply the lipstick to that same footage. So we can leave that out. If you want to be sort of completist, you can go in and actually remove that blemish in this frame as well. And it does sometimes help when you're doing larger shots to actually do more than one clean plate and get rid of those things. But in this case, we can leave it alone. So I'm going to do the same process to frame 49. So I'm just going to duplicate, sorry, not duplicate, create a new layer. Uh, we'll set that to color again. And we'll start painting that through again. Whoops. You can tell I'm obviously a talented makeup artist. And I might just erase a little bit of that there. We've got a little bit too far over the lips there. That'll do. And again, we're going to just reduce that opacity down to about 65. And merge it down. So again, once we've merged that down, I'm just going to again save. I might just fear, that's fine, we'll save. And now we can go back into Mocha Pro. So, back in Mocha Pro. We now need to bring in the other clean plate that we made. We created one on 49 already, so I'm just going to go into my edit, and I'm going to add another frame here. So we just hit the little folder button here, and I'm going to bring in that first clean plate again, so I'm just going to open that one, and we'll set that to frame 1. So we've got 49 and frame 1, like so. Okay. 
Now once we have these two, I'm just going to save, it's always good to save. And we can start doing our remove now with these clean plates in place. Again, we still need the lip track behind it, so I'm just going to turn that lip track back on because we always need a background layer to work with, even if we're only using clean plates. I'm going to keep used clean plates exclusively off because I do want to try and get some of the information as it goes through the shot with that lighting. So now I'm going to just start removing. In this case, I'm not going to actually set linear because we actually have a frame 1 and a frame 49. It is actually capturing the lighting information as it's passing through the frames and it will try and blend between those. So let's try and do the remove now just using these two clean plates. Okay, so now that render's finished, I'm just going to turn off the overlays and we can see the final result here. Obviously I'm not going to win any makeup awards, but we can see how well that uh, lipstick is being evenly lit across the shot just with those two clean plates in place. And you can also see that our blemish is also removed. So let's just quickly go through again what I just did. So I'm going to just go back to the start here and we'll go back to our original shot. So first of all, let's turn our own overlays. We did our blemish and our nose track, so we tracked the side of the nose here to get that perspective shift on the nose, and then we got our blemish mask, put around the little spot here, and then linked that mask to our track so that it would follow along. We then fed a clean plate that we painted into Photoshop to actually remove that blemish, but then we set the illumination model to linear so that when her face turned, and we came over to here, when those lighting changes happened that they would be put back into the clean plate and you wouldn't get a strange mark as it was being removed. We then did the same process for the lips. Let's just turn on our lips now. We tracked the lip area and then on top of that we set our lip mask and again linked it to that track and then fed in the two clean plates to paint in that lipstick and then that follows through to be removed throughout the shot. So that's how you use the remove tool to both remove objects and add in objects when you're doing makeup and cleanup work in beauty shots. As always, check out the website, the forum, the blog, and our Twitter stream for more information and new tutorials. This has been Martin Brennan for Imagineer Systems.